Raw Stuff with Roger. Hey guys, today we're working with Toon Squid and we're going to put our name in here. And I'm using the 1920 by 1080, which is HD. And I'm just going to create a project. And today we're going to just start with some, uh, we're going to pick a brush and I'm going to just show you some of these brushes here. Some of these brushes are pretty cool. The scruffy one is one that I made up. I kind of like that one. Uh, but today we're going to use the dynamic size brush. It's kind of like a gel pen kind of uh, inky brush. I really enjoy it. And we're going to make a Nosferatu. But we're going to start with the eyeballs. We're going to give them some cool eyes. And sometimes I like to do my noses this way with kind of like that little shape there. And we're going to give them some big old fangs. There we go. And for these guys, I'm doing kind of like a, a, a 90s style. So we're going to give them a little bit of a uh, little bit of facial hair there. And we're going to give them some really big hair because it's kind of like that that 90s style bad guy cartoon. I like giving my characters some wacky hair anyway, because I, I think it's it's kind of fun. And, and why not? So what we're going to do is we are going to just choose white or whatever the, I think white or whatever the tone of, uh, of the space would be. So if you have, uh, I don't think it matters what color you pick here, but I, I tend to use white or, or whatever the background color is. Now all I'm doing here is creating a placeholder almost. So this is going to be where the other thing is going to exist. So it's almost like I'm creating little windows here. And that's where you're going to be able to see the layer I'm going to create. And it, that'll make sense more in a minute. So here we're going to create the layer. So I'm going to get some red. And I'm going to make this layer pretty big in the space. So I'm going to make it surrounding the eyes and make it a good size. And I think I want the eyes to look pretty funky. So I'm going to place the eyeballs in the middle of the eyes just to get the spacing right. And then I want to put some yellow here because I like the kind of like creepy look that gives it. Put the yellow around the edges and a little line in the middle. I don't know where I saw this first, but it was in some kind of some kind of cartoon from from the 90s where the eyes were had a little uh, little mark in the middle of them instead of a instead of a round so I'm gonna fill in this space here and this is our eyeball and it, they don't look like it but as soon as we toggle that mask on then they only fill the space below it now you can see here I didn't color in great so we're gonna we're gonna go back and just kind of make our window a little more solid and define the edges of the window or define the area that is going to be masked. So I'm going to do this on both sides. And now I have my kind of masked eyes. And if you're following along, you can do anything you want with those eyeballs, have them create them any way you want. Um, it's, it's kind of cool. You can have different eyeballs, so you can kind of make the back picture long with a bunch of different sets of eyes, and you can switch them up real quick. You can do some cool stuff with this. But for now, we're just going to move these eyes around. And that's that's kind of what this gives you, is it, it makes it so that you can have some dynamic eyes, and they're not too tricky to make. And that's what the masking does, right? So if I if I if I toggle the mask off, it would just be the other picture again. 
Now, you can make a mask on top of a mask. And it just kind of gives you a whole other layer to work on. Now here, what I'm going to do is I am going to make some eyelids. But I'm messing up right here. So I didn't know it at the time. So I'm looking pretty serious in what I'm doing. But what I'm doing is messing up. Because if you look at the top, I'm on layer 3, which is my eyeball layer. So really, I'm creating, I'm kind of just coloring over my eyeballs. And... I didn't realize it at the time, and I'm going, yeah, wh why is this happening? Why? Oh, I don't quite understand. And then at some point here, I'm going to realize what I was doing and go, uh, oops, yep, yep, I messed up. I better be on this layer. And then I'm going to try that again. And so I'm going to do the outline of what I want them to look like. And then I'm going to fill the space in. And sometimes I use the bucket tool and sometimes I just kind of fill it in by hand. It really doesn't matter which way you prefer. And then I'll, I'll put some light lines in like this because that gives the idea of just like some shadow and some light and, and gives it a little bit of life because everybody has creases. And that's my bird making some sounds. So here, if you move the the bottom layer it kind of messes it up a little bit so you gotta you gotta kind of keep in mind where your layers are and how you move them and here again I did not label them and you know what I probably should have so this gives you a mask where you have the the holes where the eyes would go then you have the masking layer and then on top of that we have the eyes layer and then we have the eyelids which, again, should have labeled them. It's always smart, but sometimes I am not so smart. So I did not label them here. And what I'm going to do is create a little animation here just to kind of show you what's possible and, and what this can do for you in terms of making your process of animation easier or just fun, especially if you want to just have it kind of come to life and have the eyes be the central focus. So I'm going to just line things up here and and I'm going to have it so the eyes go from closed to open. So I'm going to make it a couple of frames long where the eyes are slowly opening. And as the eyes kind of kind of reach open here, we're going to move them around a little bit. Well, first I'm going to try and line up the head again because I kind of messed up the lining up of it. So we're going to line it up again in all the frames. And then I'm going to go back and just pos position where I want the eyes and where I want the eyelids to be. And again, you got to watch where you press sometimes because even though you're on a layer, where you press kind of determines which layer gets grabbed. And that's kind of one of the things about uh, Toon Squid that can make things really quick once you get used to it, but in the beginning can take a little bit to to get accustomed to. Because you're even though you're on one layer, you can grab the other layers, which makes animating really fast once you get onto it. But again, in the beginning, it can kind of slow down that process. So here I'm just stretching it out and I'm splitting the frames and then I'm doing some small movements and seeing what I think about it. And I'm trying to make a nice loop and boop, boop, boop. I gotta send the end, set the end of that loop. And there we go. I've made a nice loop where the eyes blink and they move around. And I hope you guys followed along and made some cool and wacky eyes. Um, let me know in the comments what you think or if there's anything you'd like to see or learn about when it comes to Toon Squid or when it comes to just drawing in general. Um, I'm going to do some more simple drawings coming up pretty soon, so stay tuned, guys. And uh, again, anything you want to see, let me know. Have a great day. Bye.